Do you like nature? Do you like zombies? Do you love the feeling of having internal parasites, but you want to make sure the animals of the world don't miss out? If this sounds like you, that's great. Let's take a look at some of nature's own parasitic mind-controlling abominations. Let's start with the zombie parasite everyone knows and loves. If you've played The Last of Us, the infection in-game is based on a real-life fungus. Cordyceps is a parasitic species of fungi that is most famous for decimating ant colonies in a devious way. The infection starts when an ant makes contact with a cordyceps spore. The spore quickly develops into a network of fungus throughout the body of the ant. The fungus then floods the ant's brain with chemicals, compelling it to go to a high up area where conditions are perfect for the cordyceps. The ant clamps down in a death grip to a leaf or a branch with its jaws, and cordyceps tentacles grow out of the head of the ant for about three weeks. The tentacles have these little sacs on them filled with spores. The sac then releases spores, spreading the infection to the other ants. Cordyceps have shown the ability to wipe out entire ant colonies, and there are over 600 species of cordyceps that affect different insects. Basically, an entire ant civilization dies a horrid death because of dire brain manipulation by a cordyceps. Imagine if you will, you are a snail going about your business and you encounter a large bird turd. Obviously, because you are a snail, you proceed to eat as much of the bird shit as you possibly can. Unfortunately, all of the bird shit you just ate contained eggs of a worm known as Leucochloridium. Who would have guessed that consuming another animal's feces would have unintended consequences? The eggs hatch, and the worm goes through its life cycle inside the snail's digestive system. When they're in their full adult form, they move up inside the eye stalks of the snail and begin to bloat the eye stalks by filling them with fluid. The worm then changes the snail's behavior by manipulating its brain. It makes the snail wander out into the open and look like a sitting duck in the sun for birds to eat. Usually, birds don't like snails very much. You are what you eat, and they taste like bird shit. To make sure birds want to eat the snail, the worms pulsate inside the eye stalks. This movement, along with the striped color of the worm, closely mimics a caterpillar, which are renowned in the avian world as a delicacy. When the bird eats the snail, the worm then lays its eggs in the bird's bowels restarting the cycle all over again. A part of this that might not have occurred to you is that when a snail gets infected with this worm, it's because it ate the shat out remains of another snail, who ate the shat out remains of another snail, who ate the shat out remains of another snail, and it could go on like that forever until the parasite first evolved. Nothing astounds me quite like the natural world. The next abomination on the list is the hair worm. These worms are usually encountered inside crickets. They start as an egg in the river where they hatch into a larva that is then eaten by a mayfly larva. The hair worm then buries into the mayfly's flesh and waits for it to become an adult. When a cricket eats an adult infected mayfly, the hair worm transfers to the cricket. The worm begins to eat all of the stored fat and non-vital parts of the cricket. The hair worm then starts to control the mind of the cricket. Crickets usually avoid bodies of water, because they're horrible at swimming, but the hairworm can only lay eggs in water, so it makes the cricket seek out water. Once in the water, the hairworm wriggles its way out of the cricket's backside. One cricket can have more than one hairworm, and sometimes hairworms mate with each other while they are leaving the body of the cricket. If you thought your sex was kinky, you can't say shit unless you fucked someone while you're both halfway inside someone else's blown out asshole. The last terrific life form on our list is the humpback fly. The humpback fly is exactly the size of an ant's head for a very specific reason. This fly reproduces by injecting a single egg into the thorax of an ant with its sharp ovipositor. The egg hatches and the larva moves to the head and eats the entire contents of it slowly, including the brain. As the larva eats the brain, the ant begins to wander around aimlessly until it dies of dehydration, at which point the larva takes up the entire space of the ant's head and begins to pupate. In pupation, the pupa excretes a chemical which degrades the ant's head's attachment to its body and the head falls off. The pupa develops in the head until it is ready, and then an adult fly emerges from the ant's head and starts the life cycle all over again. The total development time for this horror show is one to three months, all for this stupid tiny fucking fly to live three to five days, shit eggs inside more ants, and then die. If you like this video, subscribe and drop a like so I'm closer to getting a special sticker from an algorithm. Also, Amoeba got his own fan art. He loves them, and he says you are now his his favorite. We got a member of the cult called Rocky Dog 90210 with a clay amoeba, and a member of the cult who has to be called Levi Fuckerman with a drawing of amoeba. Thanks for the dope fan art. Oh boy, QAnon followers are pissed at us. I want to thank my audience for showing up to even out that like ratio on that video. That Adrenochrome video actually has one of the lowest like to dislike ratios on the entire channel, likely because of the QAnon supporters that were quite vocal in the comments. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Not only is it a really cool topic, but you also get to see people from Q cite Doctor Strange and Stephen Colbert as documentaries. 
It's wild. Because of all of you, all of their aggression online actually increased the overall metrics of the video, making it relatively well performing, if controversial, instead of just tanking like I assume their intention was. I mean, you know, until YouTube completely cut it off from search, but left all the other uh, ones that were supporting the Adrenochrome conspiracy theory up. You know, just because it went from very high YouTube search metrics to absolutely nothing within the span of an hour, but you know, there's no one to contact for that. I don't say this enough, I really appreciate all of your support, and this time I saw it in a way that had a measurable effect on how we're doing as a cult. That's goddamn amazing! Rally the fucking troops because we're taking on PETA next. There's a giveaway active for an AZFK mask. If you want to enter, you must either be 18 or have parents' permission, must be subscribed to AZFK, and comment AZFK for President 2020 on this video. As always, like, sub, and hit the bell, and I will see you all in hell. Okay, bye.